Hello. In this video, I will talk about diffraction. There are two main types of diffraction we use. First is x-ray diffraction. Once we have created a thin film, we need to analyze what we have created. We use x-ray diffraction to do this. XRD can identify thin film materials, analyze crystal structures, detect defects, and more. In other words, it gives us material characterization. This is an image of the XRD system we have access to. The x-ray tube, also known as the source, is what produces the x-rays. This works by having tungsten filament emit electrons. The electrons receive an applied voltage, which makes an electric field and accelerates the electrons, as well as directs them towards the x-ray target material. Electrons bombard the target atomic structure, causing secondary electrons to be kicked out of the electron shells. Holes in the electron shell caused by secondary electrons being expelled leave it in an unstable state. Electrons from higher energies will drop down to fill the space, releasing energy in the form of x-rays. The primary optics contain solar slits and divergent slits. These allow for better resolution of angles so we can see the film more precisely. This allows us to see narrower peaks if they exist in the film, but do not cause narrow peaks. We want narrow peaks because that means there is a high concentration of atoms with the same spacing. This image is of some data with two peaks. These are the peaks that we were talking about. Secondary optics receive deflected rays. Monochromators filter out unwanted x-rays. The detector converts x-rays to visible light, which is called scintillation. X-rays contact a compound that absorbs x-rays and emits visible light, then produces proportional electrical voltage. Bragg's equation helps us calculate the distance between layers of atoms or the scattering angle of x-rays hitting a crystal lattice and deflecting off. The equation is 2d sine theta equals n lambda. In practice, n is almost always 1, so we can drop that out of the equation. This works by having an x-ray contact an atom and deflect off. We can make angles out of this. Let's call this angle theta. For the x-ray that contacts the lower atom, it travels an extra distance. I'll add perpendicular lines from the beginning of the extra wave. We will call the lower points x, y, z. So for example, this bottom left angle or incident angle is say 30 degrees. If we know our extra wavelength, we can calculate distance now. We know the 30 degree angle plus the other angle must be 90 degrees. So the other angle must be 60 degrees. So we can now determine that the final angle is 30 degrees. The same as the incident angle. So these two angles are always congruent. We can now use the law of sine and calculate the hypotenuse, which is the distance between atoms. The second type of diffraction we use is REED, which stands for Reflection High Energy Electron Diffraction. This is a technique that enables us to observe and monitor the crystal structure of a film in real time as it is being deposited. This image is of the REED used in the PLD system. A typical read apparatus includes an electron gun in the range of 10 kV to 30 kV and a phosphor screen as a detector. High energy electrons emitted from the electron gun hit the sample surface at grazing angle and are scattered in accordance with the atomic arrangement of atoms on the sample surface. The scattered electrons are then detected using a phosphor screen. We mainly use read because of the intensity oscillations. High intensity to low intensity and back to high. This tells us when we have a high intensity, we have a smooth surface, whereas if we have a low intensity, we have a rough surface as the atoms are being deposited on the surface. Reed also helps us with timing for telling us when a full layer of film has been deposited. So at each peak, a new layer has been deposited. The bright spots indicate where many electrons contact the detector. Read in practice is very similar to X-ray diffraction. Both Read and XRD use an object to probe the crystal structure of a material we are growing. They both give material characterization. I hope you enjoyed watching these videos, and I hope you understand how we create then analyze thin films.